Former Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Mr. Babachi Lawa, has again raised the issue of Muslim Muslim ticket of the APC and announced endorsement of Mr. Peter Obi for president. Back down on support for Bola Tinobu. And the APC has officially come forward to deny fear of beavers against allegation that the party is opposed to the use of the technology ahead of the next year polls. Hello everyone, welcome to the program. This is Politics Today, live on Channels Television. I'm Sean Wakimale in Abuja. Let's get straight to it, everyone. It's 93 days before the uh, presidential election in February 2023, where Nigerians will be able to elect the next president for the country. Nigerians are anticipating the opportunity to be able to exercise their franchise. And I began the counting right here on the program, Your Nation's the number one network. And so, Nigeria, count with me. Hashtag Nigeria decides. The All Progressives Congress APC has come forward to say they are not afraid of the use of uh, technology for the 2023 general elections. The party was addressing a news conference today in Abuja, and the National Publicity Secretary, Mr. Felix Moka, explains that the party is tasking the Independent National Electoral Commission to ensure and a gap that may be caused by inadequacies of the systems are taken care of and to ensure a credible process. Mr. Morgan says that the party is committed to ensuring a credible process in 2023. Senator Adamu did not kick against the deployment of beavers or electronic transmission of results as erroneously reported by sections of the media. The APC administration of President Muhammad Buhari midwifed the successful reform of the Electoral Act, the introduction of the same beavers, among other technological innovation, and has superintended over credible, free, and transparent elections in Edo, Anambra, Ekiti, and Osho states. Our party and government remain committed to the highest levels of electoral transparency. You had the APC spokesperson there, Mr. Felix Moka. Well, the Muslim Muslim ticket or the same ticket controversy appears not to be going away anytime soon. One of the aggrieved persons and one of the Christians of the APC in another region of the country and a former secretary to the government of the Federation, Mr. Babache Lawa, has come out to disown the APC candidate and endorse the Labour Party candidate, Mr. Peter Obi. Mr. Lawa says his supporters should back the Obi Dati presidential ticket for the 2023 election. In a statement, uh, issued yesterday, quoted why we have chosen to endorse the Obi Dati ticket, signed by uh, the former secretary to the government of the Federation, said that it came to the decision of the sup of supporting the Labour Party presidential candidate, Peter Obi, and his running mate, Yusuf Dati Baba Ahmed, after a painstaking review and analysis of the alternative tickets. Mr. Babachi Lawal, a former SGF, is here with me in our Abuja studio to discuss some of the reasons and some of the issues raised in that statement. But before we get talking with him, there are a few stories that we need to bring you up to speed on our political roundup. trouble for the All Progressives Congress in River State as a federal high court in Port Harcourt today disqualified Mr. Tonya Cole, the governorship candidate of the party. In his judgment, Justice Emmanuel Obile held that Mr. Tonya Cole had voluntarily acquired foreign citizenship and had failed to adhere to the Electoral Act. Meanwhile, the River State All Progressives Congress has been reacting to the judgment of the federal high court in Port Harcourt, which disqualified Mr. Tonya Cole as the governorship candidate of the APC in River State. 
The leadership of the party in the state was speaking to journalists in Port Harcourt, the state capital. Toye Cole was born in Port Harcourt, River State, Nigeria, in January 1967. So his citizenship of Nigeria by birth is not in doubt. The People's Democratic Party campaign train today touched down in the Lauren de Quara state capital, where the presidential candidate and his running mate and other party leaders were welcomed by former Senate President Dr. Bukala Saraki and other leaders of the party in the state. Mr. Atiko Bubakar says he is impressed by the rally and is confident about the chances of the party in the coming elections. The presidential candidate of the PDP says the sum of $10 billion will be set aside in his program to tackle youth unemployment in the country if elected president. In our program, I have promised that I will set aside 10 billion U.S. dollars to make sure that youth and women get employment. And the presidential candidate of the APC, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, led the party campaign today to Abakaliki, the Aboyan state capital, to canvass for votes. The presidential candidate was received by the state governor, and thereafter, the presidential candidate was honored with the chieftaincy title as well. And the PDP G5 stormed Abia State, where they were hosted by one of their own, Governor of Abia State, Okezi Ikbazu. The event was meant to kickstart Governor Ikbazu's senatorial campaign, as well as the party state campaigns for the 2023 general elections. The People's Democratic Party Deputy National Chairman of North, Umar Ilya Damagum, says he is confident that the 2023 elections will be free and fair with the introduction of BVAS. Addressing supporters of the party at the zonal rally of the PDP in support of the presidential candidate of the party, Atika Bubakar, and the state governorship candidate, Mr. Sharif Abdullahi, notes that absence of BVAS in the previous elections paved way for rigging of elections won by the PDP. The coming of this new electorate, we are very, very sure and optimistic that uh, there will be change of government come 2023 government. The form of young presidential aspirants for the 2023 general elections is demanding at least 70% of ministerial appointments for young people in the next administration. The group is asking presidential candidates from the 18 political parties to ensure that at least 70% of young people are appointed as ministers or ministers of state in the new government that will be formed by whoever wins the 2023 presidential election. Youth participation government must be taken serious. We can't have a situation whereby we have 80 or 90% of the ministers being 60 years, 70 years, 50 years old, it doesn't work that way. They should not give ministers to people who are above 70 years to continue leading us. Justice Emeka Witte of the Federal High Court in Abuja has struck out a request seeking to nullify the candidature of Bola Tinubu for the 2023 election. The Action People's Party had taken the All Progressives Congress presidential candidate before the court, alleging that he submitted false information to the Independent National Electoral Commission in his form EC9. Also in Adamawa State, the Court of Appeal has reversed the judgment of the High Court nullifying Emmanuel Barcha and Aisha Bidani in the elections as the governorship candidates of the All Progressives Congress for Taraba and Adamawa State. In a judgment led by Justice Tani Hassan, it set aside the judgment of the Federal High Court in Yola, which sacked Aisha Bidani as the governorship candidate of the APC in Adamawa State. The court also directed the APC to forward the names of Emmanuel Bwacha and Aisha Binani to the Independent National Electoral Commission as the authentic governorship candidate of the party. Thank you so much, everyone. Let's get to uh, one of our major conversations tonight on the program. And he is the controversy on the same faith ticket. The Muslim Muslim ticket that is being criticized by the likes of uh, Mr. Babachi Lawa, a former SGF and a former Speaker of the House, uh, Mr. Yakubu Dogara. Some of them who have said they are now endorsing Peter Obi of the Labour Party. What does this mean to their membership of the APC? Are they still members of the APC? Will this change anything for the chances of the APC? in the northern region of the country, or in the nation at large. Mr. Babachi Lawa, a former SGF, joins us live on the program tonight. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you, Shell. Thank you very Should much. Should I say congratulations on your uh, victory at, a, at the court? I told you it will be so. You didn't agree that time. But the EFCC, no, it wasn't about me. I was just asking some critical questions about that. So, I mean, the EFCC says they're going ahead to appeal the case. Oh, they can appeal to heaven. We'll get there. We'll meet there. You think you are, oh, yes. you are innocent? 100%. The court has proven it. Mm. But if they take it to the very, to the, to the topmost, we'll to go the apex court. We'll get there. I said to heaven, we'll get there. Do you think that the, uh, the, that case was political? Do you think so? I can't speak for those who, who did what they did. 
To my mind, I think they just wanted the seat of the secretary to the government of the federation out of my hands. That's all. They could have used any other method, and they chose this one. But uh, they needed to go to the conclusion of the matter, and they lost. I think they just needed me out of the office of the secretary to the government of the federation. Not, not that you are guilty in any no, way. No. If, uh, as, but with benefit of any side, if there was anything that you did with your company and being in political office, was there anything that you have learned from that from that scenario? There's nothing to learn there. It's just all lies. So you don't learn anything from lies. Don't learn anything. Who are these people you are talking about? I don't know. They are there. I mean, they know themselves. Obviously, they know themselves. They know themselves. Are they the cabals? I, I thought know. you were one of them. <laughs> I don't know cabals. I mean, really, the issue of cabal is, I don't understand what cabal means. But you were one of the cabals at that time. It's, it's, it, it goes without saying, if the secretary to the government of the federation has no influence on the decision-making process of the government, then what is he doing there? Mm. They call it the engine room of government. So if there's a cabal, it should be the chief cabal, because he's the chief advisor to the president. But I mean, you were very confident you, that you may. Not, I mean, you were at the time you you questioned who had, who is the presidency at that time. Yeah. That was a very strong sound bite. Yes. And people thought that maybe you were arrogant about it. That's the one problem. Like they thought that maybe you thought that you were untouchable. Sharon, we discussed this before. That is their problem. Look, the, the, uh, if you have time, I'll go back through it again. When I was coming, uh, when the vice president called me. And he says, uh, AJ, I say, sir, as he normally does, I would like to see you. I would like us to meet. Said, it was around 2 o'clock. I said, ah, well, sir, I have a visitor here. When I'm through with him, I will come. When I was through with the visitor, I went to the villa. And uh, when I got in, I said, uh, do I sit down, sir? Because that day he was doing like you are doing now. He wasn't looking into my face. He was looking into his paper. You know, not wanting us to lock eyes. So he said, uh, uh, there's a big problem. I say, well, what's the problem, sir? What problem is it that we can't solve? He says, uh, you know, uh, what, what is this problem? Uh, the president has said we should investigate this matter between you and the Senate. I say, oh, I thought that matter had been put to rest because the president had uh, dis dismissed it. The, attorney, the president had directed the attorney general to write me for explanation. I did. I attached my document. The president dismissed it. I said there was no case there, second, they didn't follow any due process. So, well, I, I said, well, sir, I don't know what, so he said, what is it about, by the way? I said, I wouldn't know, unless what I read in the papers. So he said, okay, he has told us to investigate anyway. I said, well, that is good. Now, then he looked up. You say it's good? I said, it's good. As he said, well, do you think it's good? I said, because this National Assembly thing is trial by media. They didn't call me. They didn't want, want any time I wanted to show up. They would say they had nothing to ask me for. So it's trial by media. And so somebody who is dispassionate about it, who is neutral, will get to the root of the matter and find the truth. And that will be cleared. So he said, oh, okay, okay, then, okay. So sit down. So I sat down. So he now said, um, uh, of course, uh, you know, you might have to step aside. He said, specifically, very pointedly, he said, though the president did not say so, but you might need to step aside while the investigation is going on. I said, sir, is that necessary? He said, yes, it's necessary. I said, okay, fine. Now I'll go for holidays. I've been trying to go for medical checkup, but the president wouldn't let me because he would jokingly say, there's no deputy SGF. Go and die on that chair. You know, so I said, but now this opportunity for me to go. He said, oh, no, SGF, you can't go. I said, why not? He said, because we might call you to state your own side of the story. I said, okay, fine. Then you put it in writing, would you? What, you want me to come and discuss? He said, of course we will do. So I said, uh, when would that be? He says, maybe Monday. Now it was a Wednesday. So I said, okay, is that all? He said, yes. So I stood up, and as I was going out, as I opened the door, he said, oh, by the way, SGF, you understand we might have to make some inform Nigerians that you are going to be investigated and you'll be on suspension. I say, of course, if you think so, that's okay with me. Now, there's a, there's a system we establish with the president. If you are going to be removed 
which we do from political appointees, the president insists you must phone the person and explain to him that in two days' time, you will, will appoint you a replacement or something like that. The president's uh, reasoning is that he doesn't want you uh, uh, watching television with their family members and they are announcing your removal. Or maybe you are in the United Nations somewhere. So he says you must tell the people, give them two days minimum so they can tell their family. So I now ask him, so, so when is the president, when are you going to make that announcement? He says, uh, by Saturday. Saturday, I think. So, okay, thank you very much. Sir. So that's how you were. So, so, so that's how the announcement was made. And no, 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 wait, I have to finish. That's the tell end because to get the answer of question. As I was going out of his office, going downstairs, it looks like the whole of journalists in Nigeria were there. They ambushed me. They were not normally there. They normally stay with the president's side. But now they are all in the VP side. So somebody asked, sir, is it true you have been suspended? Ah, I was surprised. When he said he would be announcing on Saturday, and here it appears I was the last person to know that I'd be suspended. We continued to, I didn't, I didn't answer them. I said, you must tell me who informed you that I'd be suspended in the light of what the VP had just told me. So we continued spiraling like that until I got to my car and they blocked me. I said, sir, you must tell us who, whether you are suspended or not. I said, who told you this information? Who gave you this information? They said, sir, there was a press release. I said, from who? I said, from the presidency. I said, who signed the letter? They kept quiet. I said, who is the presidency? Because when you're talking of presidency, you're talking of the office of the SGF. And all the parastatas that report to the president <laughs> through the SGF. Let, let's move on to the topic of today. <laughs> so, <laughs> At least you have opportunity to explain yourself today. No, I did. I, I've all done right. it with you before. Right. You didn't want to believe me that time. No, no, it's not about me believing you. Yeah, okay. The fact that you have to explain yourself to the in front of the court, uh, the court of law. Um, today uh, was late yesterday night. Uh, you two. No, I didn't have to explain to the court of law. You remember, I didn't. No, but you had, I mean, you won in the court. Yeah, but yeah. the whole essence of the court was, the case was, the court felt that they had no case. Uh, so, so I didn't defend, my, there was nothing to defend. Yeah, Mr. Lawal, let, let's move on to today's uh, 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 conversation. Now, you wrote that statement. Does it mean that you are not a, no longer a member of the APC? There are two different things. In a democracy, you are allowed to disagree, even within a party. That's so you, so you are still a member oh, of the Oh, yes, APC. I'm a member of the party. I'm oh, you have endorsed, I've endorsed Peter, Obi. Peter Obi. Is he on your own volition, or you have your supporters with you? Well, uh, let's get here. The, the thing is, uh, it's not as if Dogara and I are the only people in the movement. Long before then, we have a group of Christians in APC where we sense this trend had been going on for. Since the merger of the party, APC has always sidelined the Christians in the party. So we have this pressure group where we continue to push for the inclusion of Christians in the politics of APC. Now we're about 40. So when I, when, when I came here and, and I said the Muslim Muslim ticket was dead on arrival, that was the first uh, public comment on this matter yeah. nationally. I said it was dead on arrival. So we got, when I got home, they came, sir. So what do we do? So 40 of us or more continue to strategize on what next to go, what next to do. And as we went on, of course, there were some who still felt that we could have an accommodation with APC if they are nice. Or some would say, maybe let's do PDP. Some would say, let us do labor and so on. So we, we took time to analyze the political terrain. We took time to uh, analyze the political parties in the light of the current dynamics of our political system. First, the cry of marginalization. Second, we felt that we should support a party that has the potential to win the election so that at least Christians will not be out of the political scene. So we did all this, and of course, quite a few disagreements. And we, 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 to be sincere, we, we met. APC didn't bother to come to us. APC, up to now, they didn't bother. You, you, when you say APC, you're you talking about the president, the, Everybody. the national um, uh, chairman of Everybody. the party, Everybody. and even the candidate. Everybody, the candidate is behaving as if he's already the president. He doesn't need to talk to us. But the candidate was very, your very good friend. He's my very good friend. Immediately what? after his emergence, 
I mean, I saw some activities with yourself. And you before said, his emergency, even long before Tinubu thought he wanted to be president of this country, I was one of those who encouraged him to feel he's qualified to be one. Long, long, long years, just be even before I became SGF. So you guys are no longer friends any longer? No, politics can't separate friendship. Friendship is much more than politics. Do you see, speak with the you? issue is very serious. The issue is this. We, the Christians in the North, failed. We have been maltreated. Mm -hmm. We have been insulted. Our religion has been denigrated as a people. We have been told we have no capacity. And so we feel, we feel insulted. We feel our religion has been insulted. And so anybody that has the tendency to do that, we have no business supporting him to be the president of the country where the whole paraphernalia of government will be at his beck and call, which he can use to further humiliate us, oppress us, and maltreat us. So the issue is very existential. Do we want to survive, exist as a people? Do you think that Christians are marginalized and oppressed at oh, the moment? Oh, my friend, it's terrible. If you, I give you some few examples. They're very common ones you can check on the internet. There are 27 federal universities in Nigeria, in the north, I mean. So there are 27, both military, civilian. There are only five Christians who are vice chancellors out of 27. Polytechnics, the same thing. College of Education, the same thing. Specific examples. Since Amadou Bello University was founded, the first VC, Professor Shai Audu, thereafter, they never allowed any other Christian again until Professor Saro. And it was a very, they didn't even allow Sarah to finish his tenure. Every university, as you are now, if the University of Osman Danford University VC ship is vacant, no Christian will ever be considered to be a vice chancellor. Bayero University, University of Maiduguri, University of Balewa University, even uh, in Modibo Adama University in Adama, 42 years in Adama State, a Christian state, no Christian has ever been vice chancellor. No Christian has ever been vice chancellor of uh, Tafa Balewa University. That's how it is, 42 years. No. Now, when you become a vice chancellor on the basis of the fact that you are a Muslim, it goes to show that you are expected to perpetrate the same Do you think that the, the religion was a consideration oh, or religion is, merit? Religion is a consideration. If you go to any government office, federal government office in this country, in Abuja here, you will find Christians grumbling. Oh, we will not be, they didn't send us on, on, on training because we are Christians. This place, they don't promote you because you are Christians. This place, they don't allow you to go on tour so that you don't get allowance. It's everywhere. You don't get contract because you are Christians. It's everywhere. It is endemic. It's everywhere. Every Christian in the North is a victim of this. So your choice of Peter Obi, because Peter Obi and, uh, is not the only Christian on the, on the, on the ballot, I mean, there are other political parties, and the, there is the Atiku and Okowa there, and uh, there is uh, uh, the SDP candidate, uh, there is uh, Showore and his party. Yeah. There, I mean, Peter Obi, why the choice of Peter Obi specifically? First of all, we are politicians and we are realists. Uh, you have to, you, we, I told you that we want to support a political party that has the potential to win and potential to rule, and then to address all the other dynamics of the society. What are these dynamics of narrated one? Marginalization. There's insecurity. A cry of all inclusiveness. So you look at it. There are only four political parties that are worth our discussion. And we've discussed with them, except as I said, you are a big friend, the APC, the big party. So, and they have all uh, shown a, a good English. And we concourse so is uh, it's a good material for presidents, for example. We've discussed with him. But we looked at his system, the tendency, the chances of winning the election based on our parameters is very small. Uh, we looked at the Labour Party, we think the chances are very, very big. And we think that a, a party, a, a government of, run by Peter Obi and um, Deti will give Nigeria the desired peace. Mm. It, in fact, it will win us from this oligarch. Did you get any commitment from Peter Obi before making your decision? Look, we don't need a commitment. The issue is very simple. If you go to every Christian village in Nigeria, they will tell you. There might be no candidate for the other political post, but they will tell you we are doing Peter Obi. If you go to church, as you, they, people like us, when they discuss points, we are doing Peter Obi, everybody is doing Peter Obi. So what do we do? Are, are you seeing an active pastor? Yes. 
So what do you tell your congregation about the situation of things and as a politician and as a, as a clergy? Yes. What do, you, what do you tell them? On what one? On this basis, on, what, on your decision. I'm a Christian. I'm a, I'm a member of the society. The, the, the world view of the church group is what influences my world view. We discuss. Is this a popular decision of the very, church? Very, very. In, in the north? Extremely popular. Extremely. Of course, I can tell you there are still some Christians who are uh, hanging around uh, APC, of course, for whatever is their own reason. We don't begrudge them. Some are in PDP. But extreme everywhere for the average Christian uh, rank and file in the north, the Labour Party. I know you've been a politician for several years, so and you perhaps will understand the dynamics of how to win an election. Yes. The PDP and the APC, they do not think that Peter will be stand a chance of becoming next president. <laughs> so every politician thinks that he's going to win an election. That is why he's there. And for, for some reason, the mindset will be a people tell you that you are the only person that can win. The parameters they use to assess their viability, it's only they know about it. That's why when Nigerians lose election, they tell you that they were rigged out because them and their close cycles mm. didn't bother to find out the thinking of the larger community. Let's glean from your experience, Mr. Lawal, tonight. Perhaps there's something that you're seeing that a lot of those who do not think Peter will be will win yeah. are saying. Yeah. What gives you the confidence that Peter will be will win the election? And which part of the country do you think the votes will be coming from? Now, uh, my own thinking is that uh, this election will go to a runoff. Mm. It won't end on the first ballot. It might not. The chances of it ending on the first ballot is slim, but it is there. But one, APC is not on this ballot. Really? Yes. APC is not on this ballot. What makes you think so? That's what I'm going to tell you. APC, as I told my friend before this ticket came up, I said, if you are going to do a Muslim, Muslim ticket, the consequences is this. Every Christian in Nigeria will feel slighted. Not only the North. If every Christian all over the world will feel slighted, their religion insulted. The fact that you think there's no Christian capable of doing this. And the fact that you have broken a non-convention. It's always been Muslim, Christian, Christian, Muslim. But you, for some reason, will break this convention, and so Christians will take it personally. So you will not get any vote from any Christian somewhere. I say, and my friend, if you are going to do a Muslim, Muslim ticket, how on earth can you expect to beat Atiku or Konkoso in the north? Atiku, a Fulani Muslim, a prince, Atiku, this is his fifth run. Every, every road he accumulates some experience and skills. You, are, you, are, you have no experience in presidential election. Essentially, you are relying on people that are unreliable. So how are you going to get the votes in the north? So my thinking is that Bola will not get 25% in the KB, Sokoto, Nasar, uh, Zamfara, Kano, uh, uh, Yobe, uh, Borno, Maybe Borno, maybe 25%, maybe. In all the House of Fulani states, it goes nowhere. Now he has fought the Christians. He has antagonized the Christians. So he loses Adamawa. Of course, Adamawa is a Tiku territory. He loses uh, anything from Gombe. Gombe, you know, because of bad governance, the people have abandoned APC. He loses Taraba. He loses Plato. He loses uh, Benue. He loses Nasarawa. He loses Kaduna. Kaduna. He lose Where is he going to get the votes? We get the votes in the southwest because of affinity is our turn syndrome. It's our turn syndrome. And maybe, and I told him, hey, Bola, these mega churches that have millions of millions of members are Yoruba churches, the big churches, Living Faith, Deeper Life, Redeemed, Love, whatever, Love World, or the other one. They are all churches. And these are the people that are the major opponents of a Muslim Muslim ticket. So you can't even count on the Yoruba votes totally. And Atiku, in any case, PDP has always been strong in Southwest. So why are you going to get the votes? You don't even get, during the convention, you didn't even allow us to go to the Southeast. So it's a waste of time and money. Uh, South South is not his territory. So why is he going to get the votes? So they are there. If they like, they come third. 
depending on how Concorso does, because Concorso will do well in terms of 25% in most of the Hausa states, particularly Kano, Jigawa, Sokoto, Katsuna, will do well. The candidates, the good candidates that couldn't get tickets in APC or PDP have taken the tickets in Nasarawa, in, I mean, from NMPP. So they have solid candidates that are electable. So they will do well. Atiku, of course, will clear most of the northern states. Atiku will clear some states, maybe one quarter, 25% that he gets. So Peter Obi, whatever he will tell you, they will vote Peter Obi. He has five states there. Peter Obi will, will get 25% in the six uh, south-south states. Peter Obi will get 25% in the north-central states and part of the northeast. Southern Gombe, they'll do Peter Obi. They don't want to hear any other party there. Adamawa, rank and file, the Christians, they don't want to hear any other party there. It's part of the fact that it's other Tiku territory. Well, what, what I mean, some of the uh, big guns in the APC don't think that you're, you have any weight at all, you and your friends. <laughs> we don't have weight, but they are panicking. Are they? Are <laughs> they, they are panicking? They are panicked. Why are they manufacturing fake bishops? and the fake Christian organizations to address. It's panic, total panic. See, when I look at my friend on television, I see what I, I know what I see. I see somebody in the generation. Who is that? Bola. Mm. He's not the you know, Bola we used to see. Every Nigerian will look at Bola the generation until because of the tension. For the first time, I think it has hit him that he will not win this election. On the final note, uh, Mr. Lawa. Um, you wrote there uh, in part of your uh, statement, you said that uh, the APC ticket goes against the grain of the Nigerian politics, I mean, which you have explained in part. And you said, surely APC same faith ticket is intended to shame Christians and bestow on them and their religion a second class socio political status in their own country. Uh, for those who think, well, we believe more in the character and the ability to govern. Perhaps not on ethnicity or religion. On what are you going to govern? On a divided society, who are you going to govern? Society that is at war with its, its internal self? How? How are you going to govern me? If I've been issue, you've denigrated me. Even the section 97 of the Electoral Act uh -huh. forbids anyone to campaign on the, on the basis of ethnicity and religion. Yes. But what did Bola do it then? Why is APC doing it on the basis of religion? And why are they campaigning on the basis of ethnicity? He says it's his town, it's the town of the Southwest, and in Southwest it is his town. Is that not ethnicity? Should Peter Obi not win this election, what would you do? <laughs> Me? I bet I get nothing from politics, my brother. I'm a farmer, very successful one. Mm. I get nothing from politics. All right. Mr. Babache Lawa, former SGF, thank you so much indeed for coming tonight and explaining these issues. Thank you Thanks very so much. much. I appreciate it. We take a break, and when we return, we'll be hearing from one of the spokespersons of the Peter Obi and Labour Party. Stay with me, everyone. More on the chances of Peter Obi, this endorsement that he's getting. How are the chances going to turn out in this election? Stay with me. Kenneth Okunko will be joining us next. A growing support base for Mr. Peter Obi who has been criticized heavily of lacking a proper structure, political structure, to win the presidential election in Nigeria. I mean, these growing influences, what are the chances, I mean, real chances of the Labour Party, a party that is witnessed more than ever before, this kind of influence at the center? Perhaps it has not gotten this kind of opportunity uh, to fly its color these, uh, uh, these, in this magnitude in the last few years. And the issues raised in this election also get our attention ahead, of, I mean, in the last few days of the campaign. Mr. Kenneth Okunkwo, a lawyer, actor, and spokesperson of the Peter Obi Presidential Campaign Organization. He joins me live here in Abuja City. Thank you so much, Kenneth, for joining us tonight. Yeah, thank you very much, and uh, thank you, viewers at home, for joining us. I, I guess you you must be grinning in the <laughs> in the in the waiting room uh, when you were listening to the endorsement from uh, uh, someone like uh, Mr. Babachi Lawal. How does that come to 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 your principal and your party? Well, it is very exciting. 
it is a confirmation to what I've always told you. That P2B is the only option. And this was the conclusion that Babachi Rilawa reached. That after deliberations, they came to the inevitable conclusion that the only option was Obidati presidential ticket. Because it represented the equity, justice, and fairness, which is the foundation that the competence, character, and capacity of these two gentlemen will be built on. You know the reason why at least Atiku Abubakar was feeding them with ethnic jingoism, not enough should support the North, when they have not even seen any benefit that the northern Muslim brothers have been governing them. Whereas Tinubu has caused the greatest disaffection and division amongst them on religious line. P2B went to the North and offered them immediate, decisive, and long-lasting security it will be offered them that farmers will go back to the farm and that the north will be turned to the next oil and gold. It will be offered them that there will be a Marshall Plan for education that will make the federal government intervene in collaboration with the state government and international community to ensure that in the north you have free access, easy access and affordable access to education that will transform north from being the, the region that has the greatest out of school children from school to becoming a wonderful section that is education compliant. P2B offered them that there would be an incentivization of the resuscitation of the cotton and textile industry which has been moribund and that the value chain, cattle value chain, they will be obtaining their $1 billion share out of the $75 billion in 2025, B2B offered them expansion of the infrastructure, solar energy, wasting in the north, etc. But above all, B2B assured them of adequate representation and equitable appointments in all sectors of the economy. Equitable appointment, meaning the Muslims and the Christians will be adequately represented in his government because he is coming in under the foundation of equity, mm. justice, and fairness. I mean, you're a lawyer, so you understand uh, the, uh, the chapter 2 of the Constitution where it talks about the values and the ethos that brought this nation together. And uh, those who feel religion and ethnicity have been used as tool to divide this country and its politics for far too long. Uh, how does it make you feel as a person, uh, knowing for well that uh, these two tools again had rear its head in our politics just as the election is coming. Oh, yes. That is the sad point of it. Initiated by Atiku Abubakar and Bola Tinubu. Atiku Abubakar could not even allow a tweet that was written for him, like every other thing is written for him and Bola Tinubu, including their manifestos, which they do not even know the content. He could not even allow the tweet that condemned the burning alive of a young northern Christian lady, Deborah Samuel, just because of religious bigotry. How do you expect these people to support you? But Latinubu came out publicly to say, no northern Christian has the capability, the competence, the capacity to be his deputy. What an insult. They have balkanized this nation into ethnic and religious divisions. So you, you do not support anybody using those tools? I resigned from APC. Basically, the immediate cost was the Muslim-Muslim ticket in a nation that has more than 100 million Christians. But what about... Uh, How the, do you... Just a moment. Uh, your candidate has been going to churches. Yes. And those who and have most. criticized here yeah, and said, look, this is what we're talking about. Those who are using the... The, the churchy and the mosque and the, and the ethnic tools and those kind of tools uh, to impress the people. Should we use those kind of tools anyways in our politics? My candidate is not using any tool. He's a Christian. He goes to churches. Dati Baba Ahmed is a Muslim. He goes to mosques. We are everywhere. Who will go to the church in APC? That is the whole idea of participation, involvement, giving people a sense of belonging. Should you be using the church platforms to preach for your party or your candidacy? No. That's a question. You go to your church. 
And that when he goes to church, I'm asking. He goes to the worship question, God. I mean, because yes. I mean, equity. I mean, you have ex Absolutely. explained that tonight. That you don't think that ethnicity and religion should be brought into our politics. But the question is that your candidate is seen going to churches also. Should we be using these religious platforms at all for any form of politicking? Well, you're missing the point. Democracy is a representative government. Christians should be represented. Muslims should be represented in accordance with our constitution that you don't leave anybody behind. Pitobi goes to church to worship God, does not go to church to campaign for politics. Just like Dati Ahmed goes to mosque to worship God. And that is the beauty of participation. So everybody should be actively integrated according to the constitution of Nigeria. So in politics, it's about representation. Then going to church is about worshiping God. In APC, nobody will go to church in the presidency to worship God, unfortunately. And it's unacceptable to Nigeria. The Nigerian constitution, the Nigerian people, and the Northern Christians are rightly rejecting that ticket. And not just the Northern Christians, even the Northern Muslims. Because in Islam, the worship of God, there are four reasons for the writing of the Quran, but I'll just take one which is the promulgation of the worship of God and the essentials of justice. In Islam, it is not allowed that you should denigrate or destroy the integrity of any religion or any party. In any multinational, multi-religious society, Islam welcomes justice. No true Muslim will support APC Muslim Muslim ticket. And you can quote me on that. Let's look at what this means. Uh, if you can summarize what the endorsement for the APC world said. Look, Babachilawa and his friends, uh, politically speaking, in fact, they've criticized that uh, some of them are not even capable of winning their local government for the party in any ways. Uh, they've used the party platform for, for their own gains. So they really, according to them, they said they don't care to to respond to um, the agitation of uh, the Babachilawa and his friends who are agitated about the same faith ticket. Good. Now, you know what? I heard one spokesperson of APC sitting down here denigrating the Secretary General of Northern Elders Forum that they do not even have up to 10% of the Northern support. In Labour Party, p wants to carry everybody along. We need that 10% because we don't want to leave anybody behind. Let me tell you, the greatest undoing of the APC candidate is in his unguided and unsalutary method of trying to play God. Remember, we talk about the Lord of Bodilion, and he has an uncanny relationship with the king of Babylon, the city of corruption. Recall that Nebuchadnezzar said that he built the hanging gardens of Babylon, not God. And God warned him, be humble and give respect to me. And he refused. And God struck him and he became a human monkey. This is a presidential candidate who is arrogating to himself that he is God. He said, I single-handedly made Buhari president. That's a blasphemy in Quran and in Christianity. That was the first time he fell out with Babachiri Lawa. Babachiri Lawa said, don't play God. You are arrogant. And that was what fell out between him and Rawuf Aregbe Shola Ubeni, who said, you are playing God. And it is not supposed to be so. Remember what Rawuf said when the Oshun election was concluded. He was abroad. And he said, he quoted the Bible. All powers are ordained by God. And he give it to whoever he wishes, including the business of men. But look at Bolatinubu claiming that he is God. Whoever votes for Bolatinubu is not a true Christian or a true Muslim. Because he has blasphemed the Quran and blasphemed the, the Bible. In Quran, they said, all powers belong to Allah. And Allah give it to whomsoever he wishes. If President Buhari supports uh, Bolatinubu, he is not a true Muslim. Because Bola Tinubu has said he single-handedly made Buhari president, which is a blasphemy in Islam. That is what is killing them. They don't have respect for people. Baba Chirulawa told you that Tinubu is already feeling that he is the president because he is playing God. In the whole Yoruba land, he said it is his turn when it comes to Yoruba land. Who told him that? Ayo Adebanjo 
the revered leader of Afeni Ferry, was in a Badon, the capital of the Southwest, to tell the Southwest that Pitu Ubi is the next president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So wherever you go to, in any pool you want to describe, Pitu Ubi is the chosen person because he's a man of character, capacity, and competence. And his candidacy is built on the foundation of equity, fairness, and justice. I mean, so um, aside this, um, the endorsement, and I saw what happened yesterday in Ibadan, was that out in an impressive one as far as you're concerned? Very fantastic. I've not seen such level of loyalty. Remember, our jet was grounded. Those people were there from 9 a.m. in the morning, and by 5 p.m. they were still eager to wait for their next president. I was so, I was so pleasantly surprised. How was your jet grounded? Oh, he was grounded for regulatory reasons. There was unfortunate uh, issue of the documentation, not updated the way it ought to be updated. And that is coming from the vendor, because this is between the vendor and the federal government. And you recall that my principal, one of his cardinal points on the seven-point agenda is restructuring through effective legal and institutional reforms that will prevent corruption, maintain rule of law, and ensure effective governance. Mm -hmm. So if it is regulatory, it means there might be an order or a law or a rule which may have not been confirmed to. And my principle will be the last to encourage any desecration of the law, no matter how small, even though it was a political ambush. Because why wait until the morning of our proceeding to Ibado before you ground our jet on a documentary thing that you should have just called so you think it's so political? Late, there is a political witch hunt under the regulatory uh, 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 reason. Because you could have just called them and dialogued over it. When you're dealing with a political opponent, you have to be very careful. But we're not complaining because we are a rule of law party. And my principal is not willing to breach any law. When he comes to governance, he's going to strictly adhere to the rule of law. So I am not going to tell you that my principal will not do the same thing if he is the president. But he is going to be mindful that when dealing with political opponents, mm. you have to give them notice. You don't One have my guests them. yesterday, and uh, this is a way of us just summarizing and wrapping up this conversation. My, my guest yesterday said, that, uh, considering what the governor of Anambra says, said about uh, uh, your candidate, that no one will buy him. For, uh, for I, mean, <laughs> I, I, liked, I wanted to quote uh, verbatim what he said, yeah. but if you watch the program, you understand exactly what the man said. Yes, uh, I do. Based on the, the testimony of the governor of Anambra State, you know, that, uh, and he has said it in, in the article that he released, that um, in some way that Peter Obi is helping Bolatinobu to win the election. <laughs> you know, he said he's Chaliwa Mbafo. So Bikonu, rap mwamba for Obala Sele, Jebena Fia. English is that you know what? Mwamba for is those local gossips. That's why you hear Mweke Mbafo. Local gossips. So he said he is Mwamba for, meaning the son of a local gossip. So allow him to continue his gossip in a for market. That's a governor of the state. That is because he reduced himself to scavenging on the excreta was, of the social media. Doesn't he have the right to express his opinion? His opinion about the state of the race. His opinion you must can be as, genuine. as well say that your candidate you know, will win yes. against the other candidate. That's your you have a right no, and the freedom to express your opinion. That is not even the problem. The problem when you were questioning him was he said investment meant nothing. We're not talking about that was what generated well, the issue. If, if, what if that is the case? No, it is not the case because in his own letter in paragraph 14, 15, 16, he was eulogizing his own investment. How can your own investment be good and another person's investment is bad? That's political witch hunt. That is double standards. That's lacking in character. That is lacking in wisdom. He's a man in search of character in lack of character and in lack of wisdom by professor or his name or her name is Ngozi Okonjo Iwala. Let's, let's wrap up now uh, yes. and in just about 15 or 10 seconds. Yes. If you look at how your candidate, I'm very sure that you're already sitting and analyzing how he's going to win. If you're analyzing how Peter Obi is going to win this election, by what margin and where do you think he will put the surprise? Oh, well, like I said, it's becoming a phenomenon. 
is becoming the Nigerian candidate. When I sat here and told you we have all the structures, people were saying that I was just jiving. Today is no longer a jive. The whole Muslims are with them. Yes, because the whole Muslims cannot understand why a Tinubu can no longer even cognitively align his thoughts to make coherent sense. Would you want such a man who is blah, blue, Bohari, church rat, eating unpoisoned Holy Communion, God bless PDAPC, a non-existent party. Would you want such a man who has become a food for comedians and creating comic relief to stand shoulder by shoulder to other presidents in the world? No, it is not acceptable. We're out of time. <laughs> but thank you so much, Kenneth, for coming tonight. Kenneth Okonkwo is uh, uh, the spokesperson of the Labour Party. Thank you so much indeed for coming tonight. I thank you very it. much. That's God our bless. show for tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Sean Wakimbale. God bless Nigeria.